Good day, everyone. Welcome to the weekly note of GTC Traders. This is a feature we do each week, as you can tell. If you click on the little category for the GTC weekly note, this is something that we do each week. If you are new, I am the senior partner of a separate private proprietary firm. And we decided, hey, how about we put our weekly note up? We're not by any means the only one that does a weekly note. This is something that's very common among many firms, a uh, weekly note or a daily note. And we thought, hey, how about we just make this real easy on ourselves? How about we just copy and paste sort of our weekly note from our private proprietary firm and put it over here on GTC Traders? So that is what we do. And the article itself has all of the vagaries usually of different thoughts as far as the economic calendar for that week and what we see in interest rates and various markets. Uh, if you're sort of curious about a weekly note, if you go to the GTC Traders YouTube page and you look at something like the playlist. So you click over at the playlists, come down here, go to the GTC Weekly and Daily Note playlist, look at the full playlist. The first three, maybe even the first four videos really describe why so many firms do this. Okay, so why so many firms have a weekly and a daily note. Really, what is the value of a weekly and daily note? What it is and what it is not. So that's just for folks who are new. And then, as I will now, I usually yabber on about the vagaries of each week. So let's get into this week. This week is the week of January the 1st, 2024. We have a full runway. What do I mean by that? Well, what you're looking at is a grid of the S&P 500 index, right? This is something, I actually got this idea from Rob, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. <laughs> but there's a problem, and I, I was actually talking with him uh, about this the other day. There's a problem with a lot of new self-directed retail traders, or even some guys that are aspiring, been trading for a while, and they're sort of an aspiring trader. There's a few problems. Um, well, rather than pick on anybody, let me, let, let's go back to when I first started trading. In my previous iterations publicly, I sort of talked about that, but I got started in the 90s, right? And I struggled, like all traders do. I struggled for a long time. Let, let me talk about struggling here for just a bit as a new trader. Have you ever heard that statistic? And this is going to relate into basically what I decided to do to, to make it where I am today. Have you ever heard that statistic that 95 or 98% of all traders fail? I'm sure you have. It's, everybody says it and repeats it. It's also quite false. 98% of all traders do not fail. That is false. There is a related statement that is true, but it's misquoted, right? The true statement would be 98%. I've even heard that number is higher from uh, folks who are brokers and have clearing relationships and uh, clearers is that 98% of all new traders who open account will be flat busted, broke, and down to zero within the year. I've even heard it said within nine months, six to nine months, all 98, maybe even higher, percent of all new traders who are opening the account will fail and be busted within nine months. That's a very different statement than 98% of all traders fail, right? Because many more, <laughs> like people who are trading each month, right? It's not like, there's liquidity out there. Well, where is that liquidity coming from? It's from traders who figure it out and have made it to sort of the status of sort of, you know, a veteran trader who knows what they're doing, right? It's not like if you're a veteran trader and you've been doing this for decades, you're still facing the statistic of, you know, 98% of all traders fail. <laughs> like, no, you've met, you, you know what you're doing, right? So that echelon of, of traders is always out there and it's made up of many people, right? There's, oh, good Lord, there's tier one institutions. There's, you know, we're talking hedge funds, pools. There is closed private proprietary prop. Uh, there's just many, many, there's guys that traded, you know, maybe they traded at one time, uh, for somebody like Goldman or JP Morgan, right? And when they retired or left, they have a nice nest egg and they continue to trade their own accounts, right? So 
there's a there's many institutions there's pension funds i mean the list goes on and on there's many people out there trading or investing in those who do trade like pension fund or something like that i mean what do you think fund of funds are made up of right it's made up of traders you know f funds of what of funds it's just a it's a vast universe right so it's only 98 percent of all new self-directed retail traders will fail within the six to nine months or they'll flounder for a long long time so and that was me back in the 90s and what i figured i should do maybe is what if i could look over the shoulder of somebody who knew what they were doing and that's what i wanted to do i i just and there was not a lot of information out there as there is today but it's like man if i could just figure out how they do what they do you know look over their shoulder look at some of the things they're doing maybe i could i could figure this out and eventually that's what I did. And, and that's why when anybody who is a professional spoke, I shut my mouth and I listened. There, there's a lot of Dunning-Kruger in self-directed retail traders. I see this all the time. You go out on the net and they just think they're so wise. They, they don't even know how to do this, right? Like to produce a grid. They don't know what good looks like. There's a lot of reasons why ones do a grid. It's not just, hey, look at me, I'm professional and I got a grid. Da, 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 da. Is, doesn't this look all bougie? No, there's many, many good reasons for it. Uh, and I was talking the other day and it was like a lot of good traders just, or a lot of new traders don't understand what good even looks like, right? Well, I wanna be making 25% per month. Well, good luck with all that. It's not gonna happen. It's just not. If Renaissance can't do it, you're not going to do it. Okay? <laughs> so I think studying grids is a good idea. As I said, that's an idea I got from Rob like maybe nine years ago. Because I, I couldn't get through to traders. It's like you have unrealistic expectations uh, of what trading should look like, of what your drawdown should look like, you know, when you have a bad month. You know, what's your grid look like? Well, I don't know. What's your results look like? Well, I, you know, I made some money here and they'll talk in dollar terms or something like that. Something ridiculous that you can't quantify. They don't keep good records. So they don't know. Right. So keep a grid. That's my point. When you keep a grid, you learn a lot. What is good performance? First of all, what is it you're trying to do? You know, well, I want to beat the S&P 500 index. That's cool. But there are a lot of people trying to do something else for very specific reasons to a very specific mandate. And, the, and that mandate fills a need, right? So it just depends on what you're trying to do. This is just a grid of the S&P 500 index. Why am I talking about this? Well, you can, you can learn what good it even is. You can learn what realistic expectations is. You can get in the habit of recording your trades and your performance, which I think is just an absolute must. It doesn't take but 15 seconds to do. Uh, and I, now I say that, and it sort of becomes a game. When you do this, right, it becomes a game. Of what, what number are we going to put? Oops, I'm dropping my pen here. What number are we going to put in the box at the end of the month? Right? And as you see on the GTC uh, Traders page, right, there is a GTC portfolio. So if you're on the home page, well, you know, well, there's this whole navigation menu, which is going to be expanded. We're going to put a couple of more things in here. But, you know, you go to the GTC sample portfolio. Oh, look, gee, fancy that, a grid, right? I have to update it. Um, be, and eventually I'm going to link to this spreadsheet. Um, it's very simple. I always keep track of this by spreadsheet because it only takes 15 seconds to do. I am not a spreadsheet guru by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there are guys that know their way around spreadsheets a lot better than I do. But it, you don't have to be involved with spreadsheets. It's just, just something to keep track of the performance, right? So I haven't got the images over to guys and them post it and update it and everything, but I have been keeping track of it, right? So we finished that last quarter. I was taking it very gingerly, right? Let's put, when you do this, it becomes a game of put black in the box, right? And again, I, I, I wholeheartedly urge people who are new or aspiring or struggling, create a grid for yourself. Go out there on the public databases and find, look at grids. Okay, look at performance grids. This is not a GTC, port, you know, traders thing. That, that I just finally learned back in the 90s, maybe I should be doing what professionals do. And maybe there's a reason why they're doing it, right? So please do this for yourself. But go out there on the databases, right? That's what's so funny is, guys are like, of all those stupid hedge funds, and the, none of them beat the S and P 500 index, and there ain't, there isn't any uh, firm out there that can beat the S and P 500 index. Again, so 
ridiculously false. Here is one of my favorites since 2008. It's done very, very well. Wildly volatile. This is obviously in the alts. So obviously the alternatives are going to have, you know, higher, um, higher volatility as a rule. Not all of them. There's some really impressive stuff in here. Regardless, no, I'm sorry, but there's many institutions out there beating the S&P 500 index. Again, something people just hear and they repeat and then it's like, wow, look at me. Is, aren't I in the know? All right, whatever. Regardless, seriously, get out there, look at at grids, right? And, and that was just the, the value-added monthly index, you know. Y you could look at the grid itself as well. Yeah, see? You, you can look at any one of these grids. You can expand it. Get an, get an idea of what good looks like. I, I, I cannot recommend that enough. Anyway, when you do that, it becomes a game, as I was saying, of can we put black in the box? Well, and, and then as you get towards the end of the year, and especially like with GTC, where like I know ones are watching this, right, and will be watching this, it's like, let me get black in the, in, in, for, the for the year to date, right? And then what do we have? A full runway. That, I've been saying all of the proceeding to sort of give a couple of messages. First of all, if you're not doing a monthly grid, like, why the heck not? It, like, I just don't understand that whatsoever. And if people want to talk to me about, well, I know a guy who's beating performance, it's like, okay, great, wonderful, where's his grid? Let me look at his grid. You know, let, let me look at some of the metrics beyond the grid. Oh, well, I'm not sure if he has that. Well, then it's pointless. I don't care. All right, if it's... Like, I know a great baseball player, and he's better than all the professional players. Really? Where's his stats? Well, he doesn't keep track of that. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> like, I, then I don't care. So it's the same thing here. But when you do this, as I was saying, it becomes a, can we let's put black in the box at the end of the month. And if we can't, let's make sure we get black in the box by the end of the year. Right? So that being said, when you start January, you've got a full runway. And we have a full runway. So... Let's get started, all right? Uh, on that route, uh, that SPY call spread did sell, and that's basically going to come to profit this, hopefully, this uh, month. Uh, that Uber call spread I was trying to sell did not sell, right? So I ran off and ran some errands. I put the order out there. It expired, never did get filled. I'm going to maybe look at doing that on Tuesday. We'll have to take a look, and I'm going to be looking for some other trades as well because we have a full runway for 2024, Let's see what we can get done. As always, this has been, and eventually I'm going to get this linked to uh, each each node and sample portfolio thing we put out. I'll, I'll, but the spreadsheet's not really done yet. I, I haven't got it prettied up and looking all bougie for everybody. Uh, and I'll get this transported. I'll get the image over to the guys, and then they can they can you know update this page as well. It's right here though, in case you're curious. But anyways, that has been what it's always been. Simply our thoughts, not yours, for whatever the heck day it is. As always, stay safe, trade well, and remember that love doesn't cost a dime.